What's up guys? Well, tonight's the night we're going to be unboxing our new RTX 3090 Kingpin Edition card from EVGA that arrived in the mail about 1.30 to 2 o'clock this afternoon and it's now getting to be about 7.30 as I start to work on this. Um, I'm going to get it unboxed. We're going to go ahead and look at it, evaluate it, look at the specs and maybe compare it to the hybrid edition card in terms of size and appearance and then I'm going to go ahead and install it uh, into my system and actually what I'm thinking about doing is putting everything back into uh, my big Fantex tower because uh, I'm not really doing SLI anymore at this point so one card space is sufficient and I think that'll look good so give me a second here we'll get started we'll get this thing out of the box and have a look at it <laughs> If you haven't already done so, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Thanks. Alright, so you can see we've got our nice new Kingpin box. It's about 13 pounds according to the shipping manifest, and quite the large box just as compared to the other two cards that I've had. So the first card I unboxed here a few months ago and uh, you know we did our review on was the 413 Ultra Edition uh, air-cooled card, which we later upgraded with the hybrid kit and we did the video on that and that installation process and then later we acquired the 413 edition hybrid card which comes with the hybrid kit pre-installed that's the one i've been largely using in my system with the other one being in my secondary pc and i've just been kind of goofing around with that still doing some deep fakes on that and also just doing some gaming on it that system has a an i7 9700f which is okay but i would really like to do a true gaming pc here at some point but I'm kind of waiting to decide how I want to go about that. But we'll talk about that later. So just to show the size difference in the box is this thing. Now this has a 360 uh, millimeter radiator. So that explains pretty much the difference because, like I say, the previous edition is 240 millimeters versus that 360. So there's quite the size difference in the box and the depth of the card and the width and everything. It's taller, it's wider etc my cat is coming in to say hi and he bumped he bumped my tripod how dare he but okay next st step up is to go ahead and start getting this thing out of the box let's do that jeez louise let me sort of got a brick of foam here encasing everything and here's our tubes so this would be like if i had to send this back it'd be probably Kind of a pain in the neck to put everything back together, but they've got it secured here with some kind of plastic tapes or something. There you go. Took a little of like that. That one was so secure it wouldn't undo itself until it broke. So, okay. It took a while to actually get like the two boxes, like the top half and the box, bottom half of the box to start to separate too. It's like they're so vacuum, you know, it's like suction that they didn't want to come apart. But progress was made. So, all right. Yeah, I've never seen a card ship this way. Pretty interesting. But I've never had a card with a 360 millimeter radiator on it either. I'm just getting these pieces of plastic out of the way here. All right. Oh, okay. I see what they're driving at. It's called copper. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing out of here. Try to be careful in the process and not damage anything. That would be really awful if we were to damage it. But that's why you guys watch me, so I can do dumb stuff like I did when I put that hybrid kit together, like just breaking clips and watching pieces of plastic go fly all over the place, because, hell, why would I want to, uh, you know, preserve something I spent two grand on? So, let's see, I'm guessing we'll lay this down, and then turn that over again, I guess. Okay. A little awkward. Well, they've got this all put together. I want to be careful again not to. Uh... Okay, well, that came out easier than I thought. I thought that might be a little bit of a problem, but it looks like it was okay. And they got something in here. Looks like an accessory 
slash whatever thing. Probably booklet in there, installation booklet, and I think they have probably a couple other things, but okay. So it's all off of, just like with the other hybrid, you can see there's the two tubes that come out, and then there's one cable that connects for, uh, in this case, it handles all three fans. In the past, we had the two fans, but uh, that way you can control the speed of each fan from within the uh, EVGA Precision X1 software kit. I have to see if they have a specific, like, different version of Precision X1 for the Kingpin, or if the version that I have, which is the most recent version from their site, I think it's 1.1.7 that I'm on, at least it was last I checked, uh, you know, to see if there's, uh, like, like a different version for Kingpin, or the version that I have will, will just pick it up and run with it. It should, I would hope. Yeah, let's see what's in our little package here. So it's probably pretty generic stuff. So we, yeah, something fell down there. So the usual thing about not putting your radiator on the bottom of your case. Kingpin edition overclocking guide. So that's kind of cool. It's like they uh, go into somewhat depth here. Well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. Ready out of the box. For, yeah, basically it says it's ready for uh, for liquid nitrogen out of the box. But of course you would have to take off their stock cooler. And I'm not doing that because A, I don't have liquid nitrogen. B, I don't even know how to acquire it. Uh, you know, I'm sure that there's probably a licensing thing for that. Or it's like specific laws that have to be adhered to for a civilian to purchase that kind of a thing. This is a generic GPU installation guide. These things are always, see it just shows like a generic card it doesn't show this specific one but basically if you don't know how to put a video card in the system that will show you how to do it has some installation hardware i lost something there sorry i keep dropping things uh little case badge evga case badge you usually get stuff like that with their cards but we've got uh insula this is all stuff to install the radiator pretty much so you've just got screws with washers that'll allow you to pretty much connect that to anything and probe it cable it says i think that these all have like there's a separate device and i'll have to look into it and i'll probably either put it in the comment section or try to find information on it and get it in the next video or something but yeah see this has like a connector end i don't know you can see that yeah like a little white connector that'll hook up to the back end of the gpu there's a port for it there and then there's all these probes that i think you can use for getting specific voltages or temperatures or something or allow you to control certain things but i'll have to again look into that because um i've watched some videos on the kingpin cards but i don't know everything about it i've never of course owned one and i've never had any reason to go wild with uh overclocking to that degree so that's one reason why i kind of wanted to get a system with a really good like high ipc processor you know i've used my thread ripper and uh, i game on that system but it's not really you know, that processor is only good if you're going to do high-res gaming because then you go GPU-bound and it doesn't really matter so much. Of course, I usually game in 4K or even uh, on my my MSI Prestige display, which is 5120 by 2160, and that's obviously putting you in GPU-bound territory. Let's see what we got here. We've got, uh, it's got a bunch of plastic all over it, plastic film. Uh, they got a connector protector here for the PCI Express slot connector. Looks like a, the only thing I like about this that uh, I'll show you right off the bat is that the power connector is on the back side of the card instead of being on the uh, the top like a lot of them are. So this makes it easier a little bit to hide things. Uh, EVGA has something called Power Links, which I have a couple of them laying around, but they're not any good for the current gen cards. But they would like take and convert the top port power connectors and that would have like this uh, piece of plastic and metal that come around the side and then it would have the power Connectors in the back that way, so they've just built it into the card, so that spins nicely. Look at that whole whole thing is copper inside instead of uh, aluminum like you usually get. So a lot of them are like black painted aluminum, but this looks really pretty sick. I like that copper color that has. That's one of the signature things you'll see about all Kingpin cards that I'm aware of, is that they all have that copper instead of aluminum. Uh, I was actually trying to get a 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition card here a little bit ago from a guy on Craigslist who said that he was trying to sell it here locally first and that he was then going to go ahead and uh, 
tried on eBay if nobody locally bought it. And I did, uh, you know, we tried to meet up a couple times and it just seemed like it wasn't working out. And the next thing I knew, he put it on eBay. So it didn't work out. But that was actually, uh, I think he was trying to sell it to me for, he had it listed for like 700 bucks and I offered him 500 because I said, well, if you put it on eBay, you're going to have fees and you're going to have to wait, uh, you know, you have to pay to ship it. And then usually they make you wait like three weeks to get the money and then they take a big fee and then PayPal takes a fee and all said and done, you had to wait damn near a month and you're out several, you know, upwards of a couple hundred bucks, depending on how much you sold it for. But apparently he decided to go that route anyway. But that would have been cool to review. That's why I was looking at getting it. Was it would have been an older generation of this, you know, uh, the 1080 Ti version of this card. But we're getting we're getting there here, folks. We're getting all these little pieces of plastic off there, and it's starting to look pretty nice. We've got everything uncovered, I believe. So like I say, we've got uh, a fan connection on the back, and then this says. I don't know what this says. I can't read what that says. I think it says Evbot or something, or Eve OT. I'm going to have to figure out what that is and uh, put that information in the comment section, or maybe by the time this video is done, I'll have figured it out and I can give you that information at the time. But I don't see what they're referring to there. But we've got also here, like we were talking about. Let me see if I can bring this up where you guys can see it. So this is for that probe connector that we just looked at a minute ago that's in that other little bag that connects there. And then we've got a BIOS switch on this like the hybrid had where you can switch between a standard BIOS, you've got an overclocked BIOS, and you've got the liquid nitrogen BIOS. So I think with the liquid nitrogen, it pretty much just removes all restrictions and you can, it's, it's go baby go, but, you know, of course you're, you know, you're on your own recognizance not to burn the card out by clocking it too high. Now here, we should have an SLI connector, but I don't want to... Oh, that comes right off easily enough. I didn't put any effort into that, but there's the uh, SLI connector. It's kind of down low on these. That's sort of weird. So you wouldn't be able to take this and SLI it with a different card. That's how small the card is. On, or like the PCB, for some reason, they've cut it down there. You can see it's like a notch. That's a little bit weird. I don't know what made them go that route with it, because like I say, the... Uh, the previous generation, or I should say the um, the hybrid cards that I have are about the same size as this card, but the connectors on them are up on top. So I couldn't connect this to anything else but another Kingpin card. That's too bad, but all right. Next up here, let's have a look at these fans, which look pretty generic to me. They're not, uh, like that's one thing about these that is sort of a bummer is, you know, those hybrid cards have those really nice RGB fans that came with them. And again, I don't care too much about RGB. I actually kind of want to do a pure black or like a black and copper build, which I think would look really good with one of these at the heart of it. But um, these are really generic looking fans. I mean, they look like they're okay, but nothing really particularly special about them. They feel really smooth though. Like uh, no, no, uh, nothing's holding them up or anything. They don't feel like there's any kind of, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word resistance in them. There doesn't like they're they're very smooth, so that's good. I've had some have come right out of the box, and they've been, you know not from EVGA necessarily, but just from some manufacturers in the past where the card have, has uh or the fans have had had like something in there gumming them up already. So anyhow, uh, like I say, that's all that came in the box, mostly mounting hardware and the card itself. I think next what I'll do is I'll get out my heart my other hybrid card, and we can kind of just look at them and compare them real quick. And then uh, the next thing you'll know is I'm going to have this system probably put back into my Fantex case because I think this is going to look good in there. I'll probably put this in the front of the case, the front of the top, it doesn't matter. And then the CPU also either in the front or the top because each are 360 millimeter rads. And that way we'll be able to look at it. One thing I forgot to mention real quick before I, I go, let's look at the back plate area here now. It says Kingpin on it, which is cool. And we've got, you know, some little slots cut in there to let air in and out, but got the big e for evga but this uh this card has a little oled display on it um i don't know what it actually looks like when it's turned on but you can see you can move it so depending on the orientation of the card in your case like if you want to put it like this you know and the cards in there sideways you'll be able to see that from the outside but it's supposed to display i think like temperature information and probably um like voltages and things like that or whatever it is that you're doing or frequencies or how much overclocking it is or how much power it's using i don't know for sure what all features it offers yet that'll be something again that we'll have to look into 
and you can probably control what that outputs from the precision x1 software that would be my guess it'd be kind of cool if you could put like a little you know jpeg image on it or something like that but it's so small it's like you probably couldn't see it anyway it's really wide and not very tall so most images on it would be sort of pointless i did notice one thing i dropped here oh what is this so this came this was in the box uh 20 off i'm gonna cover that up uh evga xr1 capture device which for me is kind of meaningless because i've got uh that avermedia gc573 which uh can do like 4k 60 hertz and uh hdr where it, the xr1 i think is USB C, and it's um it can only like it can pass through 4k but it can only capture 1080p and i don't particularly have any reason to have a 1080p capture device i'm not really sure what they were thinking when they even put that together but okay next up we're gonna get on the hybrid card and have a look at it all right we got our kingpin card on the left we got our hybrid card on the right and we've done these videos about these here pretty recently so i won't spend too much time dwelling on it but see these have those nice kind of textured rgb fans they have uh, connectors that would allow you to hook them directly up to the back of the card and control the lights through the precision x1 software same layout otherwise but like i mentioned with the other one here the uh, kingpin card you took like the cap off and the sli bridge was like or notches were down here up here on this card so there's no way you could sli you know this with a kingpin card although again i guess who cares but just minor difference and here as i mentioned the power connectors i think my uh yeah my uh my gimbal just died for battery power so anyways those are on the top i'm gonna go ahead and start building up the new pc here so that'll be what's up next all right everything's set up and running back in my fantex case as you can see, it's got the lovely little OLED display here, and you can use that apparently for quite a bit of different things, which is to say you can tell it to uh, display, you know, temperatures and power readout and that kind of information, uh, how much, you know, power is being used, but uh, the software gives you a bunch of different options, and I guess what I should be doing is trying to screen capture some of that at the same time, and we can kind of go through that topic so give me one second and we'll uh try to address that all right so if i'm doing this correctly we should be able to watch both of that let's uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on here real quick first so you can see a little bit better and you can see this gpu idles at 1920 megahertz so i'm pretty sure the factory overclock on these is pretty high because as you may recall um the clock speed on my previous card uh, you know, regular high res and all the 3090s I've tried this has started at 1800 and then boosted up beyond that but this one's starting at 1920 so we've got that but if we look at the software here basically I'll start it over again but in this bottom section here where you set the fans and so forth in the VGA tab you can tab over until you get to the OLED dialog display and you've got all kinds of different options here so like the default now you can see it says uh, EVGA, it's going to cycle through some different uh, little GIF images and so forth that they give you. Uh, it gives you the GPU die temperature, fan speeds, etc. So like it's going to cycle through whatever the heck it, you know, like the default is. Excuse me. And you have an animation section where you can choose all these different animations and then you can even create your own custom ones now the maximum uh, pixels allowed is 176 by 48 so it's a pretty small image but just for example uh i'll take out that one and apply it and we should be able to see this one okay you can see on the screen now it's showing it says uh let me see if that's Maybe focus a little bit better. It says, uh, <laughs> Drizzle intensifies and then has the kingpin just pop it up. I just made that in paint in like five minutes, just something to, to test it and make sure it works. So you can, like I say, um, you go into any of these add new sections and you click on that and it will let you uh, browse your PC for uh, any kind of GIF you've made or that you've downloaded or whatever that will work with this. 
Uh, you could probably just shrink existing ones or whatever it is, but and you can choose to do more than one. So if I want to do and the order that they're in, so it's going to go through the custom one that I made, and then also this animation one. This is kind of it should cycle between them. Yeah, see, so it didn't mind, but mine only cycled really quickly because it's really just a small little blip. It's just made to keep repeating. But you get the idea there. We've got monitoring options. So here we can choose GPU board power, uh, the GPU core clock, memory clock, GPU temperature, temp two. Which I'm not sure what the difference is between them. Let me uh, drop down to temperature one and two. So GPU, and then it's probably the GPU die, which I think is the air. Yeah, GPU two is the die. So it's idling at 34 degrees, which you can see in uh, Precision X1 is what it reads, and it also reads that on the OLED out output. And we can do memory temperatures, power temperatures. Uh, oh wow, there's more options than I thought. Okay. So we've got fan speed 1, fan speed 2, which is like fan speed 1, I'm pretty sure, is the fans of the radiator. Fan speed 2 is the little fan on the bottom of the GPU that cools the DRMs. So you can choose those. Uh, tachometer. <laughs> So, I'm not sure what that would be. Let's see, let's see what that measures exactly in this case. Fan 2. Let's just read in the RPMs. I guess I didn't undo. Yeah, uh, you can die. Okay, okay. Oh, you can get a frame rate on there. No kidding. I don't know what it's going to read as the frame rate of my desktop, but 44 apparently, or whatever that means. Okay, but that's cool. So you can even read that. Now, so you know, the nice thing about this is if you have an issue where I've had in certain situations where like an OSD will cause like benchmarks, for example, it seems like they crash sometimes when you have uh, like, for example, EGA Precision X1 has its own OSD. That doesn't even work in half the stuff I've tried it on. And sometimes if it does work, it makes the program crash. Like Time Spy, for example, has crashed on me on a pretty regular basis when I've used some kind of an OSD. So, having something like this, like if this was up on my desk, it'd be easier to read as opposed to it being uh, off to the side here. Like, I gotta kind of crank my neck around to go look at it. But if it was up where you could see it really easily, and you didn't want to run some kind of third-party software uh, in the background to overlay in your game or something, you know, this is a nice option. Now, the other, of course, is if you're uh, trying to do what I have to do, which is record gameplay footage and put that on YouTube then you do want something to display on the screen so it can be captured by your software and shown, but this is still a cool option. So you get the idea there, those are the different monitoring options. You can put a custom message in it, so you can type whatever you want in here and say, Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hopefully we'll update momentarily here. Hi YouTube. See? And then uh, you can choose fonts and things like that, so it does give you quite a few options. And then you can pick a static image, so I've got just my my uh, channel icon, logo on there, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, pretty good number of options, though, that you have for that uh, that little OLED display. That's, you know, it's um, a little touch, but I like it. Like I said, it has, uh, just gives you the ability to view a lot of information without running software. So I guess the next thing up to do... Uh, uh, for noise noise levels, I know a lot of people ask about noise. Well, I mean, I'm sitting pretty close to it. The fans are at 70%. I can't hear them. In fact, uh, the fans for the CPU are what I can hear. Uh, but let me turn down the fans. And uh, I'll put it on auto. Okay, I lied. I could hear them. But it's not that much of a... They're pretty unnoticeable. And that's with my case sitting open. Oops. Uh careful this door on this case kind of tends to swing closed so I got to jam something in front of it when I want it to sit open but um, if the case were closed you'd barely be able to hear them they're really quite well contained in there and uh, so I'm doing let me zoom back out here and you guys can see kind of how I have this set up in the Fantex case so in this instance I've got the fans pulling the air in through the radiator and then they're just going to be exhausted out the top through the CPU uh, Cougar Master 360 millimeter. I had to take the back uh, exhaust fan off. Reason being is I had this oriented in the other direction, but then the tubes were blocking my ability to put the radiator for the GPU in the front. And as people have mentioned countless times lately when I've been doing these hybrid cards, you don't want the tubes 
below the card because that can cause damage to the pump when an air bubble gets trapped in it. So I wanted to make sure that the tubes were running up to the top of something and thus I had to return turn this around and take off my back exhaust fan. But these seem to be functioning well enough to exhaust things out the top. I'd still like to put um, some kind of a smaller fan on there or something like that and maybe I'll do that eventually. Uh, but the big Chromax Noxua fan I was trying to use didn't work so well for that. I thought also what I might try to do um, I might be able to fit a couple of Chromax fans like up on the front here, like do two of them because they're 144 or 140 millimeter, but the mounting positions are still the same as if they were 120. And so I might be able to put even just one on there would be a little bit more cross cross breeze uh, to do push pull on the GPU to get the temps down just a little bit more. They've been pretty good though. Uh, so far, what I've been able to play around with uh, last night, like this is now Thursday night. I started on this last night on Wednesday. But it took too long to put everything in this case, so I had to postpone for the rest of the evening. Uh, anyways, like I say, uh, I, I goofed around just a little bit last night. Played uh, just a couple games real quick for a little bit to see where the temperatures were going. And I don't think it ever got above like 52. And it's really kind of warm in here right now because I've been running the deep fakes while I'm going to the office during the day. And the computer's running all the time and pumping heat into this place. So, um, you know, I'm up on the second floor, etc., it's surprisingly, you know, been fairly warm in here, so the temperatures for them to, to be still sitting around 52, 53 after, let's just say, about a half an hour of gaming is pretty good. Um, especially considering, again, the clock is running at like 1920, you know, bare minimum, whereas on the previous uh, hybrid cards, they would start at 1800. So the clocks are higher, it's fairly hot in the room, and they were still pretty good temps. So that's uh, encouraging. And again... Um, that's, that was with the fans at about 70%. On auto, we could see you know, where they jump to or where they start at. But anyways, I guess what I'll do with this thing is run a few benchmarks for uh, you know, just to see what it does and where it runs at. And then we got, I guess we've got to see how far we can overclock it because that, what's the point of owning in this card if we don't do that? So stick around. We'll get on to that here in just a minute.
guys so I think that's gonna be it for the night I did a few benchmarks there pretty much the best overclock I got on it was about 
I think I had the core clock up about 150 hertz at one point, but the best stable one was like at only 100 hertz over um, quote unquote stock, but stock being higher than a normal stock overclocking with 3090. Because as we said, they, uh, the card was running at 1920 megahertz out of the box. And so, um, as you saw in most of the results, uh, one, of the, one or two of the tests I did, uh, like the overlay wouldn't work. It kept causing the test to crash. And so I had to disable it. Uh, I think it was Grand Theft Auto 5 where the uh, the overlay didn't work. And so I apologize for that. But that is uh, just one of the, I don't know what it is, but overlays, it seems like, often cause uh, benchmarks to crash on me for some reason. So um, anyways, otherwise, though, like you could see the card, usually at like 2080 uh, to like 2115 megahertz. But the temperatures were quite good. So like you figure... I mean, it's a 360-millimeter radiator, so you would expect good temperatures, but, um, you know, for a card hitting consistently over 2100 megahertz, and at times hitting, I think the highest I saw it go was like 2180, briefly, you know, uh, but the temperature is pretty good. Uh, I would like, eventually what I want to do is to build, like, a legit gaming rig, uh, not using my Threadripper system, but building, you know, something like, you know, 10900K, from, I, don't, I don't know for sure, but like I talked to some people recently, uh, some folks that work at the local uh, computer store, um, and they were saying that they thought that the 11th gen Intel chips won't even be out to like next year because of shortages, and we know how hard it is to get any of the new AMD chips, and technically, at least from benchmark, oops, why my elbow on another keyboard, um, the benchmarks that I looked at show that, and maybe that you guys have got something else, but for gaming at least, like a 10900K still beats out like a 5900X by a little bit. Um, you know, I guess it depends on how high you can get one of them to overclock. Um, and maybe it depends on from one game to the next and how many cores they use and all that good stuff. But from what I read, at least the 10900K was still a bit better gaming CPU. Um, you know, I don't know what I'd want to build right now because we're sort of in like a interim period. You know, it'll probably be a while before anything new comes from AMD and Intel. Like I say, they're supposed to have their 11th gen. I think it's Tiger, like it's called. It's supposed to be out here, you know, any time now. But because of shortages, maybe it'll be a while. So, uh, you know, leave a comment in the comment section below and let me guys know what you think I should do in terms of if I wanted to build into the gaming rig. Now that I got the Kingpin card. I will probably keep it uh, for a while. I do like it quite a bit. I like the little screen on it. it just, it's a little geek thing for me, but I like putting my little YouTube logo on there. Uh, my, you know, my channel logo on there. I think that's cool. And just the ability to see the temps on it is kind of neat. Uh, whatever. Just just geek, me geeking out on it. But, um, you know, I'm trying to sell one of my 3090 hybrids to cover the cost of that and maybe make a little profit on it. Maybe not. We'll see. But uh, once I get that paid back off, then I don't mind, again, reinvesting in building another system. I can kind of hock, so, like I've got my, um, I got an extra EVGA 1200 watt supply sitting here, and I've got, you know, um, I can pull stuff out of, I've got the ITX box or whatever, or I can just get new stuff. I wanted to get, like, some really fast memory. Um, you know, I wanted to do an in-win case. Uh, some of theirs, like their D-frame and S-frame, are really cool, all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of getting off the beaten path here, but basically I would like to do like a high-end, just gaming, pure gaming rig, and have my workstation still working on, uh, you know, deep learning stuff. I would probably put the Kingpin in with the gaming rig, and then use my um, my second 3090 hybrid that I would still have at that point. The one that I put the, the kit on myself, I was going to keep that one, and uh, put that in with my Threadripper and just let it continue to work on defects whilst using the gaming rig purely for gaming. And then I would still have my capture system with like my 16, GTX 1650 in it just to handle NVIDIA encoder to do stuff like this. The benchmarks I did for this video, I used my Avermedia capture PC because that way, um, I, you know, you, if you record with things like Shadowplay, you're giving up performance because it has to allocate CUDA cores to handle the recording process. And so you always lose at least a few frames per second if you use Shadowplay to record instead of the capture card. The only reason you need shadow play right now, really, is A, if you're lazy like I am sometimes, or B, if you want to do um, above 4K. Currently there are no capture cards that can do above 4K. They can do 4K 60 hertz 
with HDR, but there's nothing with HDMI 2.1, and so you can't go beyond that with a capture card. But you can use Shadow Play through software to do up to 8K at 60 frames a sec. I, th I think it's 8K 60, it might be 8K 30, it might be 8K 30. Um, I can't remember. Not that you're going to get much above 30 frames a second at 8K in most games anyway. But that said, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you did, please leave it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you'd like to see me do with the card. See if you, you know, if there's anything you'd like me to test specifically. Um, you know, noise levels are good, as I mentioned before. They're not drowning out anything else in the system. If anything, like I said, I need to fill around with the uh, the CPU fans because they're kind of a lot, like they're a little bit louder than anything else. But with the door closed on the case, the Fantex case, pretty good and quiet. Can't hurt them too much. Uh, I don't have a way to test exact, at, you know, decibel levels, but. For anybody who's concerned about the noise, because some people ask me about that periodically, I wouldn't worry about it. They're, it's pretty quiet. They're pretty fairly quiet fans. Now, if you replace them with some other kind of fans uh, that might be better quality, that's up to you. And in which case, you know, they'll make whatever noise they make. But again, appreciate everybody watching the channel. Uh, thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you guys again real soon. Later.